Welcome back to Lion Recaps. Today I am going to explain a British action spy comedy movie called Kingsman, The Secret Service. At the beginning of the movie, a helicopter flies over a mountainous area in the Middle East. Four secret agents attack and capture the terrorist commander and tie him to a chair. One of these agents, Harry Hart, codenamed Galahad, shoots the commander in the legs when he refuses to answer his questions. He bows his head due to the pain of the bullet when he raises his head to reveal the grenade pin in his mouth. Harry's fellow agent Lee pushes Harry back and jumps on the terrorist. And sacrifices himself for his comrades and covers the explosion. Then two of Harry's companions, Merlin and Lancelot, remove their masks and reveal their identities. After regretting Lee's sacrifice, Harry welcomes Lancelot to the Kingsman Agency. Harry visits his wife Michelle to report Lee's death and presents her with a gallantry medal in Lee's honor. Harry tells him that there is a number written on the back of the medal if he needs any help. To identify yourself, simply say the phrase, Oxford's not brogues to the operator and we'll be ready to help you. Michelle refuses to accept the medal after which Harry approaches Lee's younger son, Gary aka Eggsy, and hands the medal to him. Then we see the scene 17 years later in Argentina, where a professor, James Arnold, is held captive in a house by a group of gangsters. Then a knock is heard on the door, one of the thugs holds his gun and opens the door, then Lancelot stands in front of him. He attacks the goons so fast that they don't have a chance to recover and kills them all. He grabs a glass of wine and takes a sip, then he hears another knock on the door. Lancelot is just about to reach the door when someone cuts his body in half with a sharp blade. Her dismembered body collapses to reveal a girl with artificial legs named Gazelle. She then opens the door for her billionaire boss, Richmond Valentine, who makes a deal with the professor to set him free. Back in London, Harry goes to a tailor shop that serves as a front for the Kingsman headquarters. He meets Merlin and his boss Arthur there as they all mourn Lancelot's death and also find out that the people involved in his death are related to the events in Uganda and Chechnya. In the next scene, we see Eggsy, now 20 years old, living in a small flat with his mother, stepfather Dean and younger sister. Eggsy's situation is also quite bad financially, he is sitting in a pub with two of his friends. Just then Eggsy's friend points out a group of Dean's goons sitting at the next table. Seeing this, a bully angrily comes to their table and threatens Eggsy and his friends to leave. Outside, Eggsy shows his friends that he stole the bully's car keys. They take his car and do donuts in it and then drive off, but seconds later a police car pulls up in front. Eggsy drives the car in reverse and covers some distance, but after a short distance, he crashes into a car. He tells his friends to run away from there and drives ahead with the car, hitting the police car. Now Eggsy is in police custody inside the police station, he refuses to reveal the names of his friends, on which the officer threatens him with 18 months in prison. Eggsy takes off the medal around his neck and calls the number on the back, saying Oxford's not brogues. And shortly after Harry arrives and bails him out, the two of them are shown to the pub. When again Dean's goons get to Eggsy for more trouble Harry calmly tells them to leave. But a bully yells at Harry and tells him to leave, he gets up from his seat and goes to the door, and locks it. He then pushes a glass with the hook of his umbrella and hits the main goon on the forehead, knocking him unconscious. And then quickly proceeds to beat the rest of the bullies, and then so skillfully wash them all that Eggsy is shocked. Harry pats Eggsy on the shoulder as he goes and left him after Eggsy assured him that he wouldn't tell anyone about what he saw. Eggsy returns home and Dean tortures him for destroying his partner's car. Michelle intervenes, so he shoved him aside. Harry listens to all the action through a mic he has strapped to Eggsy's shoulder. Harry speaks into the mic and tells Dean to let Eggsy go or he will report to the police about Dean's involvement in various crimes. Eggsy runs out of the flat and, once again avoiding Dean's goons, makes his way straight to the tailor shop Harry tells him about. Harry is waiting for him there, he suggests Eggsy be a candidate for the Kingsman agency. Eggsy decides he has nothing to lose and joins Harry at his suggestion. Then they both board a shuttle underground that takes them to join the other recruits. There, Eggsy soon befriends a girl named Roxy, while a boy named Charlie and his friends make fun of him. Harry then finds Professor Arnold in his class and asks him who kidnapped him. Arnold screams in pain and his head explodes with an explosion that knocks Harry semi-unconscious. 
Soon, two thugs enter the building and before they can attack, Harry places a hand grenade and jumps out the window. Then there is a loud explosion and the shock of the explosion puts Harry into a coma. When Valentine learns of Arnold's death, he decides to investigate who it is that has been spying on them. All the candidates, including Eggsy, are shocked when suddenly their chamber-like room starts to fill with water. Everyone except Eggsy puts the toilet pipes into the commode to get outside air to breathe. Eggsy tries hard to open the door but fails, then he decides to go to the mirror and smash it with a hard punch. And everyone goes to the other room, including the water, where Merlin is watching over them. Although he does praise Eggsy for breaking the mirror and Roxy and Charlie for going with the pipe. But he says that everyone has failed because they didn't use proper teamwork which resulted in their friend Amelia drowning. In the next scene, Valentine and Gazelle meet for dinner with the Scandinavian Princess Tilda and the Scandinavian Prime Minister. Valentine presents to them his plan to control the threat of overpopulation in the world. The Prime Minister agrees with Valentine, but Tilda thinks Valentine is a madman and angrily storms out and calls her guards. Gazelle immediately runs after him and uses the blades in her prosthetic legs to kill the guards and kidnap Tilda. Eggsy and his companions continue their training by personally training a group of dogs. Eggsy is stuck with a small pug who doesn't listen to him very well though he becomes very attached to him and names him JB. After Harry recovers, Merlin and Eggsy discover that Professor Arnold had a chip implanted in his neck, causing his head to explode. Similarly, the Scandinavian PM had the same mark under his ear as Professor Arnold's. Merlin deduces that Valentine is behind all these events because he met the Scandinavian PM a few days ago. Eggsy shows Harry and Merlin a video of Valentine's latest announcement promising to distribute free SIM cards around the world. They suspect Valentine of kidnapping several world leaders and some celebrities too. Harry goes undercover at Valentine's estate to investigate more about Valentine's plans. The two eat McDonald's for dinner and discuss their appreciation of James Bond films. But Harry doesn't get much information other than seeing one of Valentine's employees holding a pamphlet from a hate group church in Kentucky. Of the nine candidates recruited to become agents, only Eggsy, Roxy, Charlie, and Charlie's three friends remain. Their next assignment involves them jumping out of a plane and landing on their target via parachute. Merlin tells them that they need to know what to do in a situation where one of their companions doesn't have a parachute. Panic-stricken, one of their colleagues, immediately, opens his parachute, but Eggsy tells them all to hold each other's hands instead of opening their parachutes. Everyone opens their parachutes one by one, leaving only Eggsy and Roxy to survive and he opens Roxy's parachute at 300 feet. Merlin sends everyone home except Eggsy, Roxy, and Charlie because they all failed the test. Eggsy meets Harry at the tailor shop where he takes Eggsy to a room full of secret weapons at the Kingsman Agency. Including a hand grenade that looks like a lighter, a pen that activates poison, and a pair of shoes with poisonous blades. When they return to the lobby, they find Valentine and Gazelle there, Valentine trying on one of the different suits in the shop. In the next assignment to be the Kingsman, Eggsy, Roxy, and Charlie are sent to talk to a young girl at a nightclub. When an interrogator gives the trio a drug drink and they faint, a while later Eggsy regains consciousness, he finds himself tied to the train tracks. The man tells Eggsy that if he provides information about the Kingsman and Harry, his life will be saved. But Eggsy refuses to give information about this and the train runs over him. But just then Eggsy goes into a small pit under the train tracks and then Harry appears and says that you and Roxy have passed the test. They watch Charlie taking his test, but he refuses to die for the Kingsman and is then sent home. During their final test, Arthur and Merlin ask Eggsy and Roxy, respectively, to shoot their dogs. Eggsy fails to do so, while Roxy's side hears a gunshot. Arthur rejects Eggsy and sends him home. He gets in Arthur's car and drives home disappointed. When Eggsy arrives home, he hugs his mother, but when he sees a black mark on her eye, he angrily heads to the pub to find Dean. When Eggsy is all set to fight Dean, the car automatically takes him to Harry's house. Harry is frustrated with Eggsy for failing the test and reveals that the bullet in the gun was not real. He also reveals that Amelia didn't drown either and works for the Kingsman in Berlin and Roxy is then made the new Lancelot. Harry attends a hate group's church in Kentucky and hears a hate speech from the bigoted leader. 
A few thousand feet away, Valentine and Gazelle sit to activate the signal on the phones in the church of those who had Valentine's SIM cards. As Valentine watches Harry leave he activates the signals on everyone's phones. This causes everyone including Harry to get into a violent rage and starts hitting each other. Harry shoots several people in the head and kills anyone who tries to attack him. In the end, everyone is killed in the massacre and only Harry survives. Eggsy, Merlin, and Arthur sit in separate places to watch the action as Harry exits the church while Valentine and Gazelle are waiting for him. Valentine explains to Harry that the signal from the SIM cards enraged the human brain, causing it to lose the power to think. Valentine then pulls out his gun and shoots Harry in the head, killing him instantly. Eggsy screams in fear while Valentine pretends to be horrified at killing someone with his own hands. Eggsy goes to meet Arthur at the tailor shop and Arthur tells Eggsy that Harry recorded Valentine's confession. I have sent all the recordings to the higher authorities and I hope that Harry will get justice. He then pours a drink into two glasses in Harry's honor while Eggsy notices the implant mark under Arthur's ear. Arthur is inspired by Valentine when he presents his plan for mass genocide because he believes that mankind is a virus on the planet. And wiping them out would be beneficial so Valentine manages to convince all the world leaders to join his plan. Arthur and Eggsy then drink wine in Harry's memory, after which Arthur pulls out his pen to activate the poison he put in Eggsy's drink. And offers Eggsy to join Valentine's plan like him or be willing to go to Harry. Eggsy moments earlier asks Arthur if the paintings on the wall are of the former king's men and distract him by changing the drinks. After Eggsy refuses his offer, Arthur activates the poison with a pen and then kills himself on the table with the poison instead of Eggsy. Eggsy goes to Merlin and Roxy with all the information he just received from Arthur. And the three leave to stop Valentine's plan from being completed. Roxy is sent into space with two giant balloons to launch a missile at one of Valentine's satellites. While Merlin and Eggsy sneak into Valentine's base where he's throwing a party for everyone involved in his plan. Eggsy uses Arthur's invitation and strikes a similar pose to get in. Roxy approaches the satellite in space but one of her balloons already explodes because she is at too high an altitude. She manages to launch the missile before the second balloon bursts and falls back to Earth. Then she opens her parachute in time and lands safely on the ground. Eggsy approaches the Prime Minister of Sweden and knocks him unconscious before hacking into his laptop. Then Charlie suddenly appears and holds Eggsy with a knife to his throat and informs Valentine about his presence. Eggsy punches Charlie and knocks him to the ground by electrocuting him with a ring on his finger. Eggsy then breaks out and runs back to his plane, shooting Valentine's guards. When Valentine places his hands on the scanner, the missile hits Valentine's satellite, destroying it and preventing the signal from activating. However, Valentine immediately takes control of a nearby satellite and reactivates the signal through a biometric scanner, which Merlin is unable to control and he sends Eggsy back to the party site to stop Valentine again. As the signals go live around the world, people in London and New York start killing each other. Michelle tries to sneak into the bathroom to kill her daughter after Roxy has already called her to lock her in the bathroom at Eggsy's request. Eggsy is surrounded by guards from all sides as they go back in to try to stop Valentine. Eggsy then tells Merlin to activate the chip found in Arthur's neck. As soon as he activates it, the heads of all the armed guards and world leaders start exploding like fireworks. Eggsy runs up to Valentine and Gazelle with a gun and fires at them, forcing Valentine to remove his hand from the scanner. Gazelle breaks the glass and jumps up and tries to kill Eggsy with a shot from her gun. The two then jump into the air and attack each other and Gazelle tries to cut Eggsy with her legs. But in the meantime, Eggsy cut Gazelle's arm with the blade in his shoe. Due to this, the poison spreads rapidly in his body and he dies soon. He then pulls the gazelle's leg and throws the spiked rod into Valentine's back, which passes through his body and instantly kills him. Merlin and Roxy then congratulate Eggsy for saving the world. Finally, Eggsy comes into the pub, dressed in a fine suit, where Michelle and Dean are sitting together. He tells his mother Michelle that his new job has brought him many benefits, including a new house. He asks Michelle to leave Dean and come with him and after that Dean threatens Eggsy again and says your mother is not going anywhere and gets ready to fight Eggsy with his goons. 
Eggsy reaches the door and locks it, repeating the same words that Harry once said, Manners maketh man. He then smashes the glass with the hook of his umbrella and hits Dean in the face, knocking him unconscious. He then confronts the other bullies and repeats another of Harry's statements with a smile. Will we see each other's form or will we fight, with all that the movie ends? Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on the notification, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.